Hello, my soccer universe. It's a joy to record this podcast after what definitely must be the WTF result of the season. The most, the most surprising result we have seen so far with Milan going to Napoli and just obliterating them. Absolutely obliterating them. It's like old champions against new champions. Yeah, who are the champions? And we also have to talk about if that has any implications on the Champions League tie between those two. And remember, when I talked about the draw, I said I think that was the one thing that Napoli didn't necessarily want to play, from, especially since they know each other so well. So uh, really, really stoked, still very much stoked about that result. However, uh, there were two sweeteners. First of all, Fiorentina winning at Inter to start out more or less the weekend. That put a smile on my face. I didn't watch the game because there were other games that were a little bit more important to me, but I uh, get caught up on the highlights afterwards and I was following it and I think I said, I'm not going to watch it. I don't want to jinx it because Inter is going to get something. No, no, no. And that uh, Jack Bonaventura, uh, former Milan player scoring, it was all that sweet. Uh, so Inter in serious trouble and everyone is already talk, talking that Inzaghi might get the sack sooner or later with so many losses in a row because they are Champions League. Um, Fortunes are very much in danger and they don't have that much money, honestly. So this is they have to make a prudent decision right there as well. And then Roma winning, which is, of course, my second favorite team in Italy, also made it a little bit sweet. Although uh, I have to say, if there's a Champions League struggle, uh, I know that Roma is in there as well. And I would like to get Milan and Roma in there. Uh, let's be frank about that. Uh, but I know the Milan part takes over. But let's talk about uh, a little bit about that, 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 that game because it came so out of nowhere. Uh, even the unpacking that that had made for the Milan away jersey, uh, I kind of said, yeah, I'm very much aware that this post on, on the day where Milan is going to get stomped over by Napoli. No, it was exactly the opposite way. And it was such an impressive and unexpected performance and yes Oziman was not playing for Napoli Napoli were not playing with the first string squad however uh, the way Milan played they completely bossed the midfield and there was no one missing for Napoli in midfield they decided it in the mid midfield they uh, doubled on Quadratskele they made some tactical changes that were rather uh, interesting uh, especially with, um, I think, Krunic and Benazir holding down the middle and pulling Tonali a little bit further up front. Uh, playing Brian Diaz on the right. Finally, we have someone that can work on the right. It was really, 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 really good. Uh, it does not do anything. I mean, I had a feeling that, I mean, this, this game was definitely more important for Milan. We, we don't need to talk, talk, talk about it because they need to stay in the champions uh, uh, in the race for the Champions League spots. Whereas Napoli probably can let it slide a little bit because I don't think they need to pick up. Uh, I mean, uh, to clinch it early, you have to pick up quite, quite a few points. But I think it is probably enough if you pick up uh, twelve or thirteen, uh, twelve or fifteen points, and you're done. I mean, it's not that hard to win the title and, and anymore and despite Napoli having a kind of predilection of sometimes blowing it this time I don't think they will blow it and even in the little uh, halftime scuffle they uh, between Maldini and Spalletti uh, Maldini said coach you've won the league what do you want uh, so yeah however the more important thing is what does this mean for the Champions League title what does this mean for the Champions League? I mean, my uh, schizophrenic uh, going into the game, I was, oh no, we're going to lose, we're going to miss, miss the Champions League, it's going to be a rotten season. Uh, after it's 2 0 at Napoli and they're playing so well, I'm thinking, man, we're going to beat them, we're going to make it to the Champions League final, and with our luck, Origi is going to shoot us to the Champions League. We are going to win the Champions League, baby. It's, it, doesn't make much, it, doesn't, it doesn't make much sense. None of this is really going to happen, I think. But it was really, really important for Milan to go back on track. Uh, I hope they can keep this up this time around.
honestly, because we had some great results before and then it went a little bit sideways. Especially with a string of small opponents come, coming up, that was always a little bit more probable. But maybe, 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 maybe this is... As I said, I don't know what it's going to mean for the Champions League. Um, I think it will put some doubt in Napoli's head. Uh, that for sure. But I think that was there before because Milan has actually, in both games against Napoli, performed rather, rather well. You typically losing at home, but winning at the Maradona Stadium. So interesting stuff. In interesting stuff. For sure. Uh, I think we should probably talk about uh, some other games as well. And, and I will talk a little bit, little bit more about Napoli, mean about the game itself. Uh, Atalanta continue also their push for the Chat Chat Champions League. We're getting 3 1 the Cremonese, uh, Deron, Boga, and Lukman scoring. Uh, the, la the last two goals coming in the last 20, 20 minutes of, of the game. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Cremonese had equalized. Uh, and yeah, Hoyland getting an assist and he, he keeps racking up scoring points. I think he will play somewhere else. I already said Bonaventura gives Fiorentina a 1 0 win. Now, uh, I heard. Uh, I have two um, views on the game. When I saw the highlights, I saw that mostly Fiorentina chances early on. But then I hear some other experts saying that actually Fiorentina didn't play that well. However, Inter were really horrible and missing chances. And you could see that then in, in the others, especially later on. There were quite a few ones. And again, Lukaku missing the chances. Uh, I think overall, from what I could tell, it was a it was a mature Fiorentina performance, if not convincing. And Fiorentina are in a really good run at this moment. Uh, they have won at least five in a row now, uh, and climbing up the table. And watch for them in the Conference League. Honestly, I think they are the informed team of the ones that are left, and that's a rather wide open competition. So uh, that will be definitely interesting. As I said, for Inter, it looks. A little bit scary at the moment because they have been in a raw form losing three in a row and it was usually okay away from home in the lose but at home that doesn't happen but they lost now uh, against Juve at home they lost now against Fiorentina at home as we will see they will play Juve uh, soon again um, and as the confidence with Inzaghi is running thin the proper probably will have to pay him off I guess and yeah Let's gonna see. I honestly, if I was in, I will try to get through the season and then, uh, and just mean, um, you know, try to see if you can get get a new coach. I was actually laughing when they said, "Oh, we wanna have the Zerbi." Uh, who are you gonna pay for the Zerbi? On honestly, because this is something undervalued. I mean, Inter is splashing, trying to splash the cash, but they are not in good financial shape. They need to be really, really careful right there uh juve the secret second place team in the table uh get a routine win over verona yes verona had the chances was in in, in the game but you were overall the better team moist can uh scoring the winner uh in the 55th i uh, probably could have been two as well early on i think verona may have if they take a chance they can make it uh, a, a proper game but uh, let's face it verona is a team that's unfortunately going down you were keeping up uh we have in a um between the champions league ties uh we have the big um verdict whether you is gonna get the points back and i have a feeling they will I have a feeling they will get the points back and then you were in sec second place, which just will make the uh, top four race even more spicy because you will look rather settled in there at, at, at the moment. Not a flashy team, this Juve team, but they're getting points and that is uh, rather big. Uh, Bologna is also on a really good run overall, uh, you know, for the entirety of this year already uh, with some blips here, here, here and there. And it is Porsche in the third minute who sets them, Austrian player, with a wonderful uh, far, far distance shot who sets them on their way. Uh, Moro in the 12th already seals the game, the Musabero just after the half, so it was all early, early, early goals. Rather a uh, routine win, and I'm actually starting to wonder about Udine. Remember, they were kind of near the top of the table at the beginning of the season, 
and they have been on a little bit of a slump. Yes, there was the win over Milan, which is the one similar nonsensically at what Milan uh, did uh, to Na Na Napoli, where uh, they completely deservedly lost to Udine. So I do not really get either <laughs> one of these teams at, uh, at, at the moment. A uh, team that is in really good, good form now, officially at the moment, second in the table. If you get the points back there, third is Lazio, who actually keep on getting getting the points. Pedro and Milinko with Savage scoring the two at Monza. Uh, Lazio is a really, really well coached side. I think they have their frailties, but overall, uh, they start reminding me of those Napoli teams of the mid uh, 2010s. Uh, under Sari, where they finally find their footing. Uh, seemingly, the board has enough confidence in Sari, and watch out, watch out for Lazio. I think they they will do something sooner or later. Uh, Roma also. I mean, Sampdoria was in that game to to win. I think it it was over the rather even game. For me, the decisive moment came when Murillo got sent I sent off with a second yellow card. Um, and then a slightly poor, the poor defending of a Matic cross that Van Aldum heads in. I know the way he heads it, it's really, really hard, hard to say because he puts it on the floor, uh, there, 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 there goes in. But I, when I look at the, uh, at the goalie, there needs to be a way to save this. Honestly, it was not that great. It was a really, really odd goal. Um, one of the best scenes of the, of, of the weekend happened between the coaches when... Um, Coach Stankovic uh, started to get in, uh, you know, racist chants from the Roma fans, and Mourinho just hears it and steps up towards the Roma fans and said, "No, no, calm it, calm it, quiet, quiet. You're doing well, quiet, quiet." And 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 and, and you could see how Stankovic, who of course played under Mourinho, was very thankful uh, for that uh, from from M M Mourinho. It was a blink it and you miss it moment, but it was really I I was there. There was what's happening, and then uh, I heard after uh, 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 Mourinho stopped the Roma fans from uh, hurling racist abuse onto Stankovic. So for once. Uh, positive news around Mourinho and then laid on a Dybala penalty and a really well taken El Sharavi goal give Roma the 3 nil win. I already talked a lot about uh, the Milan Napoli result, however, I mean, what stood out for me is that Brahim Diaz and Leao ran that show, and when Leao plays with a smile. When Leao plays with, 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 with a smile, it is trouble for any opponent. And you could see it. I mean, the first goal, Milan already had bossed the mid, mid, midfield and felt they are, they're actually playing quite, 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 quite well there. But when Diaz finally, and this is something that Milan has been missing, except for Theo, who sometimes darts forward, uh, no other player could take another player on and, and run past him. But this time... Diaz makes a uh, feints a few things, goes through two Na Napoli defenders, plays it in, in, into Leao, who dinks it over the goal, goalkeeper. And when you see the replay, how he's with a big smile to it, doing it. And when Leao plays with, with, with a smile, he's the best player in this league. And finally, we see Leao again. And I am so sad, sad on. I will get this Milan shirt that they beat Inter and Na 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 and I will get Leao on, on the back. May it cost what the what the what. I really want to get that shirt. Uh, because Leao has delivered some brilliant performances playing in this shirt this season. Um, he then made a, um, a gesture after he, 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 which I think Spalletti mistook for taunting and now Napoli fans, he basically said, you know, I'm playing with a smile. The criticism, it doesn't bug, bug, bug me. So this was a, a little misunderstanding. Then uh, a second goal. Ball falls to Brahim Diaz, who takes takes already gets the deflect back him, and a few minutes later it's two nil. At that moment, I was actually and I was already a little bit very uh, with, with with two two nils because Lask just made up a two 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 nil. But I thought that looks really good. Uh, it will be really hard for Na Na Napoli to come back there. Um, also need to say that Giroud, uh, great striker play without scoring. <laughs> But other than that, he played really, 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 really well. Uh, the only period where I really thought that this this game is in danger was um, early in the second half. You know, Abraham Diaz had to come on. Salamakers 
off because uh, there was some stuff with Thai where purely one well, wanted to make sure that he is play, playing fine. Um, then Napoli was really, really pressing. And there was a, a, a period where you really thought that you have to uh, see, 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 see this out. Uh, Mike Menyo, uh probably was, was one of the... He played so brilliantly, but this was not a brilliant performance for him because there were a few that spilled, but he kept a clean, a, a clean sheet. But you could feel that Milan was kind of hanging in, in the ropes and then Tonali steals the ball, plays it into, in, into Leao, who in the 59 just from far out, just a rocket in the top corner. 3-0. That was the game. That was exactly at the point where Napoli were pressuring, trying to get that one goal uh, to get themselves back into the game. Leao kills the game right there and then. And then what happened afterwards is probably the out-of-body experience for Alexis Salimakers. Uh, I could not believe what I saw. I mean, I always enjoyed Salemakers because he is a overall a limited player, but he gives you a good wor wor record. He had this re re record early on of his Milan career whenever he, he played, Milan didn't lose, but he was more or less a bit part player. The way he scored the fourth goal, this was Maradona-like. He goes through the defense, left, slalops left, right, and puts it in. in, in it. I, I couldn't believe my eyes. This was a, this was the WTF goal, and then he almost made a second one that would have been even better, where he also dances past opponents and then makes a shot that Meret finally saves. I need to mention Meret was wearing a mask, not because he had anything on his face. No, they wanted to keep it as a good luck charm, because Ozyman was missing. Yeah, that did not work out all that well. Uh... I also have to say I did not necessarily like the substitutions from Pio Pioli. So a little bit, um, especially Bakayoko. I don't want to see Bakayoko anymore on his own, honestly. You can really give others uh, uh, some, some time. But overall, this was a rather dominant performance and I need to credit Pioli for coming up, going back with the four on the back instead of the three. Uh, the old system where you can play with more energy. Uh, now with Mike, Mike Magnier, there's a little bit more security. He's a better ball distributor, so you have that. And yeah, if Leao on the left and Brahim on the right, it just works. And it worked beautifully. It worked like a charm. Uh, and I said it, this is a big marker for the Champions League tie. I'm not saying that Milan will win this Champions League tie now because... Um, Spalletti will definitely stew over this one and see what he, he can do. I mean, this is an embarrassment. Napoli will do their best to not get embarrassed and get one back over Milan. But that was a win for the ages. Also, I have to say the Napoli support was not as great as one would expect because they were demonstrating, uh, uh, you know, protesting the high ticket prices that the Laurentiis made for the Champions League. But hey, that's modern football. For you, I'm sure it will be sold out. Uh, there were two games, yes, yes, and not that I can tell, tell you more, much about that. We have Empoli get a win over Lecce. Lecce, actually, uh, you could get worried if Verona and Sampdoria and Cremonese wouldn't be so torrid at the time. But they have lost now five in a row. And then Sassuolo-Torino, a classic mid-table duel. Uh, Sassuolo's run stopped with that draw. Uh, Torino, you know, uh, staying mid-table. I have the feeling that's their ceiling. I'm not sure they will be able to push for Europe. So let's look at, at, at the standings. I mean, Napoli in the clear uh, Champions League spots are the most in Lazio Milan at, at the moment looking good with Inter precariously dropping down uh, Roma also in there but uh, again this is having Juve with 15 points less as soon as Juve get more this is a much much different conversation um, we also see that in the expected performances now uh, Napoli and Lazio have pretty much the same performance wise it's just Na Napoli does it on a higher level but uh, that tells you how impressive uh, Lazio actually are. And also that you were outperforming, uh, out outperforming a little bit the expectations. Of course, uh, Fiorentina a little bit behind expectation, but that they get, get it going in that at the moment also. And the three on the bottom are definitely the ones who are 
worst. Uh, the three on the bottom are also the ones that are very likely to go down, which honestly is sad to see for, for me because there are two classic teams that I would like in my Serie A with Verona and Sampdoria. Uh, up top, it is now Lazio Milan ahead of Inter again. I give you with the 15 points and it's you with Lazio Milan. And I I think even with the 15 points less, you can make a push for, for this. It is so crazy, but uh, at the moment, uh, they are just um, f six points behind Inter. That the way in in in, in the training that seems absolutely doable. Let's look at upcoming games. Uh, we have for the first the Calcutta Cup Italia round Inter against Juve, Cremonese against Fiorentina. Uh, two very different uh, weight. <laughs> so look at this Fiorentina team. I mean. I think you were the favorites at, uh, at the moment to win the Coppa Italia, but look out for Fiorentina. I think they get some, something going. I have a, I have a feeling that Fiorentina might end the season with the title, be the Conference League or the Coppa Italia. And then we have a rare round Friday and Saturday because of Easter. So we have all the Champions League teams playing already on Friday. Inter have to go to Salantana. Uh, a sudden duel also between Lecce and Napoli and Milan at home to Empoli. Which uh, I'm a little bit wary to 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 be honest. And then we have uh, the Turin Rome, uh, uh, this, the first Turin taking on Roma, and then Lazio against Juve is a really really big clash there as well. Uh, Atalanta Bologna, watch out for that one as well as Fiorentina Spezia. I think those could be very interesting ones. It's so great to make a video after a big win for Milan. I am really, really overjoyed. Uh, I just hope this continues. That's my. That's the only thing I'm hope, hope, hoping for, where I'm not quite sure about it yet. Any case, please let me know what you thought, thought about this, uh, things in Serie A this um, weekend and how you see things going forward. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel and we'll see more and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!